because I think she said everything that all of us would echo uh, in this chamber in terms of the problems we have with this uh, particular issue. And I would draw members' attention to uh, the government's manifesto uh, back in 2010 when it said that it would make the post office the front office of government services. And how hollow has that uh, promise been in terms of the manifesto? In fact, the Conservative manifesto, we could be here all day uh, picking holes in, in, in what they promised and what they've since delivered. But to put that into context and why we consistently have these debates in this chamber about the uh, dilution of our post office services locally, whether it be crowns or franchised or indeed our postmasters and postmistresses who run our post offices, because it's not the front office of government at all. And back in 2012, uh, in fact, back in 2011, £172 million pounds of government services went through our post offices. That went to £168 million in 2012. It was down to £141 million by 2015. In 2017, it was down to £114 million and dipped below the £100 million pounds mark in the post office annual accounts in 2018 to £99 million. Pounds. That's not the front office of government. That's the government withdrawing services from the very thing it's supposed to be protecting on behalf of all uh, our uh, constituents. And when you add to that the history of this particular uh, project, um, the Royal Mail and the Post Office were split off under the Postal Services Act of 2011. The Royal Mail was subsequently then privatised. The government said it would then look after the Post Office network. And what we've seen uh, is that post, post Office network withering on the vine uh, since the Royal Mail and the Post Office were split up under that piece of legislation. And indeed, if you look at the share price of Royal Mail uh, today at just over £2.50, it seems that the Royal Mail may also be uh, in a bit of financial uh, trouble as well. That was hardly a success for the taxpayer of this country, or indeed uh, for the Royal Mail uh, itself. And the reason that franchising is so difficult is not just because uh, successful franchising operations end up in WH Smith, and we've heard all the problems that happen with that, and I would draw members' attention to the Consumer Futures report that was done in 2012, and way back at the start of this process, that said how disastrous uh, franchising into uh, retailers like WH Smith would be, and that has proven to be correct. Uh, and the government back at that time, when I was the Shadow Postal Services Minister, said that the Consumer Futures Report was something that was built uh, on incorrect data. Well, that has since proven to be absolutely correct when you look at the practice of franchising uh, into uh, Royal <coughs> uh, Services. And let me just um, say a little bit about what's happened in my own constituency. The Morningside uh, Post Office, Crown Post Office, um, was a profitable branch. Um, it was at the top of Morningside Road. I can tell you how popular it was in terms of footfall, because it's where we do our street stalls mm -hmm. in South Edinburgh, because <laughs> on a Saturday morning there's no better place than to be outside the post office with a stream of people going in and out, looking to engage with a Member of Parliament on various issues. And that Crown Post Office came up for franchising. Now, the interesting thing about that franchised um, potential was that no other shop in the local area wished to take the franchised post office. And therefore, uh, when you ask about the Plan B, and my honourable friend Rob Wigan mentioned uh, the Plan B from the Post Office Network, uh, they don't have a Plan B. When you ask, well, what happens if a franchisee either doesn't come forward or there's nothing that satisf satisfies the uh, criteria for running a Crown Post Office, uh, the Post Office have no idea. And indeed, I remember uh, when we had a public meeting in Alloa, when uh, Gordon Banks, the former MP for Oakville and Perthshire, uh, had his Crown Post Office uh, for threat of closure, and someone from the audience asked Post Office Limited what happens when either the franchisee fails or the franchise or no franchisee comes forward. The answer from the Post Office was we'd have to invest uh, in the uh, Crown Post Office itself. Well, perhaps we should be investing in the Post Office before uh, they are up for closure, are up for uh, franchising. I have to pay tribute to Ibrahim Julak, who is a sub-postmaster who runs the Brunsfield Post Office in my constituency. He's going to take on the Crown Post Office by uh, merging both his small sub-postmaster's post office and the Crown Post Office. But these uh, franchised uh, Crown Post Offices don't have all the services that we expect from the major Crown uh, Post Offices. Uh, and that just diminishes even further the ability for our constituents to use uh, the Post Office, which is a, a vicious circle in terms of whether or not they can then be uh, self-sustaining. And I'll just finish on the issue uh, of footfall and staff. Um, Footfall is very key if we want to revive our high streets. And the best thing to drive footfall is to have services that people wish to use. And my constituency post bag certainly shows me that people wish to use the local post offices. And that drives the local cafe, it drives the newsagent, it drives the, uh, the viability of public transport services when people are moving around our, our local communities. So we do need to have these linchpins 
in our local uh, communities. And the most interesting and ironic thing that I've seen in terms of the franchising arrangements uh, in my own area is that four major high street banks have also closed their branches and the letter they send to their account holders is, don't worry, you can use your local post office. Well, only if your local post office exists. It's the very same problem we have with the free bus pass in many parts of Scotland. That, Of course, pensioners can travel anywhere they like on a free bus pass in Scotland, but not if their concessionary travel card doesn't have a bus attached. Well, to it. They've got to be able to get on a bus, uh, very briefly. <clears throat> very briefly, Mr Evans, and I do acknowledge the commitment the member brings to this issue. Could we not turn the whole argument on its head as high street banks continue to close their branches and say, let's keep the Crown post, post offices open and let's say to the banks, why don't we offer you a one-stop shop in this wonderful old premises that's been there for hundreds of years and thereby give any additional service to our customers? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, it's great intervention because it's something I keep asking the Chief Executive of the Royal Bank of Scotland about and other uh, Chief Executives of our high street banks is why don't they come together with the post Indeed. office for, to bring... Uh, two business models that are struggling with the way that we use modern communications and modern banking, but get them to co-host themselves in areas in which they can do that. The technology must be available. If I can do all my banking on this, uh, surely the high street banks are able to come together with the post office exactly. to be able to co-locate uh, and provide that for our uh, constituents. And finally, uh, Mr Evans, is about the staff. Um, the reason that staff tend not to be tupid across uh, when you have a franchisee partner uh, is because the franchisee partner simply don't want them because they don't want the cost. And the reason they don't want the cost is because they want fewer staff. And the reason they want fewer staff is because the service can't quite poss possibly be as efficient and effective as it is with fewer experienced staff. So staff tend to take the quite generous redundancy package from the post office. And that means you're losing that experience, you're having a brain drain from the service, and again it goes into this vicious circle of the service becoming less efficient and less uh, and less able to be able to meet the needs of our local communities. So it is right for the Minister to come here again, but I hope we're not having the same debate about franchising and closure of post offices again next year and the year after and the year after that. I hope the Minister eventually takes on this new role that she has, grabs the nettle in terms of the post office network, pauses the franchising uh, process, looks at what the post office can do in terms of its profitability and invests those profits back into the current network so we can all have post offices in our community that are sustainable for the future.